have their little slip of paper. And uh, let's start out with that. Everybody has it, let's read. Today I was in a restaurant and looked out of the window to see a river. The Lord said to me, do you see the rough surface of that water? That is because there is turmoil under the surface. The same is true with people who are rough around the edges and are easily triggered to things such as pain, anger, and hurt. Have you ever seen somebody who is tense, where it is easy to get on their nerves? Do they always seem irritable? Does this describe how you feel? Have you ever wondered why people is, is like that? It is certainly not part of God's design for us, for his word is clear that we are given a sound, clear mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God has, given a, has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Turmoil in one system is usually caused by emotional buildup. Things in the past that were never let go, or unclean spirits. If something is bothering us, we, do, we need to make the choice to release our concern to the Lord, whether it be bitterness, fear, hurt feelings, emotional, damaged feelings of rejection or abandonment. Those feelings are devastating to our spiritual health and must be released from our system. God's word clearly tells us to cast our cares upon him, for he cares for us. 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. I want us to release our emotional buildup, hurt feelings, and give those things to him. Why did God tell us to do this? Because he knew the devastating effect that such negative buildup can have on our systems. If we don't fail to follow God's command and allow an emotional buildup in our system, we then make ourselves available for spirits of anger, hate, bitterness, rejection, and so forth. Once that happens, those spirits can lay under the surface and continuously remind us of why we are hurt or angry. It is like a record playing in your mind over and over again, and continuously escalating you to a higher level of bondage and turmoil. If this has happened, the first step is to release the negative buildup to the Lord. Stop listening to all the reasons as to why you are upset. And if the problem seems to linger, seek deliverance from those spirits. It is not normal for our lot, rivers to be rough from, from turmoil that has been brewing under our surface. The deadly side of hurt feelings, <clears throat> hurt feelings are signs of an underlying struggle with unforgiving those, with forgiving those who have hurt us. What you may not know is that unforgiveness can send a person to his grave if they, if they die without resolving those issues in their life. The Bible makes it clear that if we are going to be unforgiving, we're not only become spiritually defiled, Hebrews 12, 15, put that on the board for us, uh, RJ, and turn over to term, tormenting spirit, evil spirits, which is Matthew 18, 23, uh, 35, but our unforgiveness actually blocks God's forgiveness towards us concerning our sins. Matthew 6, 15, but if, you, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That means if you are unforgiving or, bitter, or a bitter person, you are not clean to stand before God. Your sins are still hanging over your head. If you fail to release others for what they have done to you. In the spiritual uh, series, there is a powerful two-part teaching. We won't, we won't share that. But I want you to see <clears throat> something here today, and I want you to look at the board up there. First, would you put that uh, in the, um, or you've got Matthew 6, 15. But if you do not forgive others, their trespasses are. We've already covered that. <clears throat> but read that in your own heart and your own mind. Let's read it since we got it on the board. 
of their recklessness and willful sins, leaving them, leaving them, letting them go, giving up resentment, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. All right, turn to Hebrews 15. Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? What was the other one? Uh, Hebrews 12, 15. Put that on the board. This is a teaching, so let's get involved in the teaching, okay? Think of yourself in school, you know? You're here to learn, okay? And by the way, to learn some important things of what we're teaching here this morning. Let's read this, Hebrews 12, 15. Exercise uh, foresight and be on the watch to look after one another. We're to look after one another. But how many of you know we don't want nobody to look after us? I know everything about life. Pastor Tilton, what do you know? You're only 80 years old. I'm 16. I believe I could help you if you were listening. How many people we have counseled over the years and they don't understand why they have these negative feelings towards one another. Does anybody want to know? Does anybody care? Yeah. <laughs> I've got all good feelings towards Susan. She's got all good feelings towards me. I've got all good feelings towards all of you. Do you have good feelings towards everybody you know? Or is that underlying feeling of resentment, bitterness, unforgiveness? I mean, we're all human. Look at the person uh, beside you and say, I'm human. We all have all of these feelings. I know sometimes we look at the preacher and think, well, you know, he's really, 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 really. You don't know what I'm going through. All the feelings I've had to deal with, people saying all kind of ugly things about me. Look at me. Why would anybody say anything ugly about me? Can you imagine somebody saying something ugly about me? Look at me. Look at me. Can you, can you imagine that? Huh? We won't go into that. But how many of you, you got to deal with those feelings. Why do we feel like we feel? What has programmed us to feel this way about my father, my mother, my brother, my sisters, the people at church, the preacher, the deacon, the elder, and my boss at work? If I could just get my hand around his throat for five minutes, I'd send him to Wherever he's going. <laughs> Come on, church. Is that not where? Have you ever felt those feelings? Come on. Get in touch with your feelings. If you don't get in touch with, with your feelings, you're just going to go on and wander in the desert. Why am I feeling this way? Why do I see things this way? Why do I interpret everything against me? I walk into church and I'm conscious of everybody. How many has ever been so self-conscious you couldn't enjoy the party? Let's see your hands. self -con Come on. Come on. Self-conscious. Come on. Huh? Come on. I shall not lie. <laughs> we all have. That's part of the human element. We all, listen, we all have come from the same stump. I don't care outside, you may have black skin, you may have white skin, you may have yellow skin, you may have whatever skin you got, but inside, the same blood. You know why? We all come from Adam. Come on, church. Yeah, that's right. Some of you don't want to admit that. That's in the Bible. The Apostle Paul said that in the book of Acts. The same type of blood that runs through me runs through everybody else. It all comes from Adam. And so we have these feelings. And what happens is that we're ignorant of spiritual things. And when we have all these negative feelings towards people that we should be loving and respecting, and we have these negative feelings towards them, 
The devil sees it, and all of a sudden, one day you wake up, and I feel depressed. I feel so depressed. Come on, anybody been there besides me? Come on, over here. Hmm? Why are you feeling depressed? What's going on the inside of you? Have you, have you come in grips with your, your humanity yet? Have you not come into that realization that in the flesh there is no good thing? Let me tell you something. You take my flesh and put on your bones, and I take your flesh and put on my bones. Flesh is flesh. Don't make no difference whose bones that, that is on. You know where I got that from, Michelle? Is that not true? Now, see, this is not scolding. Hey, listen to me. Don't go to sleep on me. You got to hear this. Don't go to sleep on me. I'm going somewhere with this. Yeah, well, I know everything. Boy, this going, you're going to wake up one day and find out you don't know nothing. <laughs> the devil will be so on top of you, you'll be so depressed. A, a, depressing, a, a depressed person comes to me, and I ask them a question. Why are you depressed? Now, remember, I already know the answer. Why are you depressed? I know the answer. Thoughts produce. Hmm? Attitudes of depression. <laughs> Have you ever had everything going right and you feel depressed? How many ever had everything going right? Not many hands are raised. Now, I'm getting to it. Do you know, how do you feel inside? Do you feel not loved? Do you have feelings of anger that when somebody looks at you the wrong way, you bark back at them? Angry? Don't, don't get on your, you don't need to get mad at yourself. Don't get mad at yourself. Don't get on yourself. Recognize, I'm trying to alert the people of God, what's going on in your life and why you're acting and reacting like you are in many situations. How many wives I've, I have, have said, married women said in my office, what's going on in your life? Oh, it's awful, Pastor Bob. Well, what seems to be the basic problem? Watch this. My husband. Uh -huh. Oh, your husband is your problem? Let's talk. Some of you smiling, you've been there. Well, uh, what seems to upset you the most? Well, he drinks a beer every once in a while, and I don't like it. Oh. Does he work? Yeah. Does he bring money in? Yeah. Do you have food in the refrigerator? Yeah. Does he physically beat you? No. Does he seem to like you? Well, yes. But he drinks that beer every once in a while in the, in, the, in the garage, and I see him drinking that beer, and I don't like that. Now, let me tell you what happened. She is building, she has built up a, resist, a resentment system in her thinking, and it's now in her attitude, and she's mad at a man that puts groceries in the refrigerator. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, simple little things like that. Simple little things like that. And, she, and, and, and I look at it, and she's all depressed. Now, you have built up a defense mechanism against your husband because you don't like that particular one thing he does. Whether it's sanctified or not, whether it's the thing he should do or not, that's not the issue, but how you are looking at it is the way it will affect you. Come on, church. Now, we've got to grow up here because if we're going to help anybody, we've got to see it in our own life first. 
My job is not to change her husband. My job there, being that she's there, to change her thinking, which will change her attitude, which will change her frozen emotions and her actions towards her husband. So I'll let her talk a little bit more. And there, oh yeah, there's one other thing I don't like, Brother Bob. Oh, what is it? He will never take the trash out. Oh, never take the trash out. Does he work? Yes. Is he somewhat of a neat person? Yes. Does people sort of like him at work? Yes. Does he pay all the bills? Yes. Run after him, baby. Run after him. <laughs> but see, in her mind, she's perceiving and she's building a negative attitude in her own self and rebuking the devil. And the devil's in Florida bob bothering the, the, the governor in Florida. She's her problem. That's why the Bible says, think on that which is ugly, which is good, honest, noble, because it develops your attitude. My kids were perfect. Let me say that again. My kids were perfect. Aren't your kids perfect? Why does your kid have a ne negative attitude towards you? Why do you have a negative attitude towards your kid? They're not perfect like me. And what you're doing, you think of that negative, one little negative thing. You kill the kid over the one little negative thing, and he's doing 99 eight point things good, and you'll kill him on that one stupid thing. Boy, you, you should have just went through my mind. You, should, oh, you don't know what just went through my mind. Can I share with you what just went through my mind? Knucklehead. Seriously, is that not true? I've seen wives pick their husband to death. <clears throat> you take, for example, how many has ever raised chickens? <clears throat> Let's see the chicken farmers. One, two, three, four. I've noticed chickens. You got ten chickens. You got one chicken that has this bad spot right on the head. Let's say there's a hundred chickens. That makes it more interesting. There's a hundred chickens. One chicken has one little red spot right there in the head. Chicken number one, peck. Chicken number two, peck. All the way to the, 90, the 99th chicken. And the chicken is just like this. Been pecked to death. And that 99 chicken pecks that chicken on the spot right there. And he falls over dead. And the chicken said, I only pecked him one time. I tell people sometimes, you got a chicken mentality. You're pecking people to death. Stop pecking them to death. Is that not true? How many has been on the pecking side? How many has been on the receiving side? <laughs> all right, we're talking about the receiving side. We've all been pecked. But have we forgiven the person that pecked us? Mm, now we're getting down. What's built up in the heart? I knew I was right. And my daddy picked, not pecked, but picked. It's close to it. Pick, 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 pick. Okay. My sister over me. My sister's always right. I'm never right. How many of you know? That can get in your system and poison you to where you can have 
a spirit of bitterness. Exercise, foresight, and be on watch, watch to look after one another to see that no one falls back from and fails to secure God's grace, his unmerited favor, and spiritual blessings in order that no root of resentment, rancor, bitterness, or hatred shoots forth and causes trouble and bitter torment and many become contaminated and defiled by it. I've lived long enough to see a church come together, people loving one another. One individual starts pecking on the pastor. In most denominational churches, four years of pecking is about all the pastor can take. I'm being honest. I'm, I'm, I'm putting it down the middle of the road. I've been in this thing a long time. I've dealt with some pastors. I've helped them. I cannot, Bob, I can't, I can't go on. Come on, let's talk. Let's talk. I've got a woman in our church. It's not always a woman. Sometimes it's a man. I can't go on. I'm getting bitter. I'm getting, I'm frustrated every time I stand. I'm fussing at the saints now. I'm arguing. I'm beating them now. Oh. There is a turmoil inside. I remember years ago when God was teaching me these lessons. See, there's many lessons, especially when you're in leadership. You gotta learn some. You gotta learn some lessons when you're in leadership. I remember the congregation. They weren't doing what I wanted them to do. <laughs> it's Sunday morning. It's time to be here. Ready to go at 11 o'clock, ready to praise God and sing hallelujah to Jesus. Hey, but three people here and it's 11 o'clock. Well, I've already got my message for the day, Lord, but next week I'm going to let them have it. I'm going to preach on hell. I'm going to bring some brimstone down in this place. I can do it, too. And God says, Bob, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, <clears throat> yes, Lord, you got a problem. And that problem will terminate and defile the whole congregation. A little leaven leavens the whole loaf. You don't just affect yourself. You affect everybody's around you. If that root of bitterness, that's why. Look after one another and see that no one falls back from and ends up with a what? A root of bitterness defiling and contaminating many. It's not just what we do, but what is flowing out of us. Come on, church. What is flowing out of us to the people of God? God rebuked me. You get your own personality out of the way. You get your own whatever you think and all of that. You preach the word. You preach the word. Don't preach your feelings into the people. When you're flusterated, don't put it into my people. They're my people, Bob. You're just a shepherd. What flows out of you must be my spirit. Because that's what they're going to carry home. Boy, I say, God, this thing's deeper than I thought it was. I've got to die to myself. Yes, that's the way it ought to be, but this is the way it is, and you have to deal with it the way it is. And you have to deal with it. Listen, how many children today are hurt and wounded? Listen to me. Look at me. 
because their parents was full of hurts and wounds, and they didn't know how to handle it. They didn't go to a church like this that somebody could explain it, and what did they do? They passed it on to them, and then they passed it on to their generation, then they passed it on to their generation, then they passed it on to their generation, to the third and the fourth generation. That bitterness of tamination goes right down the line. When Susan and me got married, I did not have kids on my mind. Did you, Charles? You'll be getting married. You won't have kids on your mind. You'll have kids. Okay. Bless you. <laughs> There's one in every crowd. <laughs> that don't bother me. Be honest. I like honesty, you know. Hear that? He got kids on his mind. Ah! You got kids on your mind? <laughs> uh, uh, well, don't worry about it. It'll, it'll, it'll happen whether you like it or not. <laughs> but see what I'm talking about? That's why if we go to a religious church, we'll become religious. And that's why Christ didn't come for us to become religious. He come that we, our sins might be forgiven, that we might be set free of all of these forces that are tearing us apart, tearing our families apart, not knowing that it's inside of us, and we pass it on to others. That's what I look, and that's why I'm patient with people. I see good leadership. I see he could really be that way, or she could really be that way. But I see some forces inside that needs to be dealt with, and I hold study. Don't be too quick to lay hands on people, Paul tells Timothy. Let them prove themselves first. Let's see how they're going to act under pressure. When they're, when they're done wrong, when nobody really seems to be paying you any attention, let's see what's going to come out of Jeff. Or his dear wife. Or this precious girl. How many likes pressure? Huh? I don't like pressure. But without it, that little stuff that's inside of you will not come to the surface. I used to get mad at myself. God, Lord, I didn't know that was in there. I, I didn't really mean to tell Susan what I said. But out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And God says, son, I love you. Understand what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help you. See, I know it's there. And if you don't deal with it right here, when I want to do something about two years from now and really bring a revival, and I need everybody in here to be clean and ready to go, full of the Holy Ghost, understanding these principles that I've been teaching. A couple dozen people come off the street in here. You'll know what makes them tick. You know why they're rebellious. You know why they say words like, I hate you. Or their eyes roll back in rebellion. Or they look down like that and their hair is growed over their face because they don't want nobody to see their eyes. I can look into your eyes and see your soul. Your eyes tells me what's in your soul. I see it. Don't bite it. <laughs> Absolutely. You can too. Once you understand this, it's no problem. Spiritually, you are able to discern. I would look at my kids, I look at my kids in the eyes and I can tell whether they're angry, they're disappointed, they're not getting enough attention, especially when the brick comes in through the window. Ah, that boy needs attention. Come on, church. 
Many kids do things like that because daddy and mom is not giving them the attention. And they'll suck every bit of strength out of you, but hang in there, it'll pay off. Well, I don't want all this stuff on me like that. We don't have any kids. And you probably won't grow up. Well, you got Pastor Bob, though, yeah. I asked one of our elders one time, you don't have any kids. How are you ever going to grow up? He says, I got you, Pastor Bob. <laughs> See, your attitude will change when somebody gets on your case. What comes to the surface when somebody gets on your case? Hmm? <laughs> you want to come up and testify? Anybody? We got the mic up here. Hmm? Let me pick on somebody. Hmm. Better not pick on nobody. Susan said, don't pick nobody. That's scary, isn't it, when you're sitting there. I, you know, I'm learning when some of you guys preach, and I remember uh, Michelle was saying, looking at me like, what's that? What's that scripture? And I'm like, scripture? Who am I? I mean, <laughs> I, I, I didn't even know my name, you know. <laughs> don't scare me that way, girl. <laughs> And I'm sorry if I scare you sometimes, but you wake up, don't you? <laughs> All right. But what's going on inside? Now, I'm getting you to think. The object of this message today, what's going on the inside of you? Fear. All right. Tell me how you will act and react if you have fear in you. It will cause you to act and react in a certain way. For example, the fear of being rejected. None of us want to be rejected. None of us. It's a painful feeling to feel that, well, I'm not as good as somebody else or everybody else. Yes, you are. God died for you. You're just as good. We got one DVD, powerful. The preacher's kids, the preacher kid that you gave us. Oh, boy. We'll lock the doors when we show that. Like the prodigal son. But she came back home to daddy. Listen to this. Young people, you think you have it rough? Thank God you got a house. You got a refrigerator. Amen. You got a bed. Jonathan, you got a bed, son? Got a bed. Got a bed. Have you counted your blessings lately? Or are you ready to take on life? Wisdom. That's good. <laughs> Get close to mama. There'll be times when we'll set you out on the street. Well, <laughs> let me change my words. Okay, honey, let's see. Let's see what you got. Let's see. Here, here, here you go for it. But mama, I don't have a job. I know. But I don't have a car. I know. Uh. I don't have any money. I know. But you remember all those years you wanted to get out on your own? Here's your chance. You got a kid that wants to leave the house? Help him pack. Yeah. Get, hurry up. Let's pack. Daddy's got the door open. And we love you. This ain't our will. It's not God's will. We're going to miss you. Oh, by the way, uh, <clears throat> we're going to have your favorite dish for supper tonight. You, you are? <laughs> I'll wait till the morning before I go. Come on, I, you know, is that not true? I've, I've been there. I'm 14. I can handle it. Okay. I'll guarantee you. Gosh, it's more, oh, only been 30 minutes and that kid's back already? See, now what happened? Let me, I've got to get through this thing. I've got to let you go. I've got, whoo! 
Woo! One o'clock, I can't believe it. Kids, listen to me. You're human. These things will build up. Mama don't really love me. She gave Sally an extra cherry on her ice cream. I saw it. And it happened last week, too. And I resent that. And that builds up. And then a wall of petition starts to build up against Mama. She don't love me as much as Sally loves me. Here we go. When you're young, it starts while you're young. And you never deal with it. Then you get married. And then the fun begins. I saw my husband. She gave, he gave his mother an extra cherry on the ice cream. That thing is still in there. You come to church. I can sing real, real good. But they always ask the other sister to sing. <laughs> I'm going to find me another church. Come on, that's where we live. Speak to me, somebody. Because, see, all the way back, what is put into these kids will go through when they get married, and the husband say, what's wrong with you? And she looks at him and say, what's wrong with you? You just like your mama. Well, you just like your daddy. That's right. That's where they learned it. I'm always blessed with Charles. But he tells about his life coming up. He had the choice to go the way the rest of his family. He wouldn't be sitting right there. He wouldn't have these precious children, a beautiful wife who loves him. But he chose to stand again. Oh, you don't think he didn't have those feelings? They could just get his hands around their neck a couple of times. <laughs> Come on, this is where we live. See, that's a feeling. Come to the service. Because underneath there's that current. All that going on inside of you. And you go to, you go to school and somehow you can't fit in with the people at school. And, 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 and all kind of emotional trauma in your life. You've got to release all that stuff and say, I ain't caring that with me no more. That ain't, that ain't going to be me. Those that are led by the Spirit are sons of God. If I let my emotions lead me, chances are I'd, I'd be out there on the lake fishing. I'm serious. If I didn't love God, I'd, I gave this up a long time ago. But I'm a child of the King. And God had to show me all this stuff that was underneath. That's why the waves were so high in my life at one time. I was surprised when God began to show me what was inside. Insecurities. Anybody can identify with insecurities? Fear. Fear of tomorrow. I ask people, what are you fearful of? I don't know. I'm just fearful. Control. Got to control everything. Everything has to just be right. Go ahead. You'll end up in a nervous breakdown. Because you can't control everything. How many's tried? Let me see your hands. I've seen some pastor. If you were, some of you in some of these churches, you would never be, you would never be preaching. You wouldn't be an elder. You wouldn't be a deacon. You wouldn't be teaching. You wouldn't be preaching. You wouldn't have the, what you have back there. The reason that I let people do and flow with God, as long as I know it's godly and everything, because God has dealt with me. I'm the pastor. I know it. God put me in this place. And if I see something that looks like it's going out of line, I will deal with it behind the scene. And I've done it many times. But I'm not going to beat the whole congregation because i got one person or two people that hasn't learned the lesson yet. But we'll love them until they do love it. But we won't let them destroy this fellowship. <laughs> Simple not come. But see, we know something is wrong on the inside. What's going on inside? Now, let's bring this down to what's going on inside. God knows. I know it to a certain degree. And God loves you and I love you. 
and we're here to help you. Remember, God has not come to condemn us. He, he has come to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. But you will never reach that life that he has intended for you until you're willing to deal with some of that frustration that's happened in your life many years ago. It's still there, stirring coming out in your speech, coming out in your actions, coming out in your behavior patterns. I had a godly wife. When God began to touch those areas in my life, I'm going to say it like the people on the streets say it. All hell broke out. And I don't say that in a slang word. I could not believe the evangelist, Bob Tilton, got everything under control. And God says, okay, I'll just take my hand off of you just for a little while. And I went through two years of all that ugly stuff coming to the surface, insecurities, fears, not having a father. An alcoholic father always produces rejection in a child. We try to make people feel accepted in this fellowship, and you are accepted. But as long as those feelings that you have of rejection dominate and control your life, they have become your master. And what you yield to becomes your master. That's very clear in the Word of God. Now, here's what I want you to do. This week, when you go home, get honest with God. Let God show you. He will show you a lot of things. Write them down. Write them down. Then get on your knees before God and put that thing before God. And say, Lord, I need your help. I need you to heal me. Bring that thing out. Listen to this. Bring that thing out in the light. How many of you know the roaches will flee? Have you ever been in a house that's had a lot of roaches? How many of you ever lived in a roach house? <laughs> Turn the light on. How many roaches do you have? This type of preaching will turn the light on, and already some of you are recognizing some roaches. You're the only person, only person can deal with it. You and God, we're here to help you. The light has come, and you see some things in your life, and it makes you feel uneasy, doesn't it? It makes you feel sort of bad. We're not here to make you feel bad. We're here to shine the light. and to be free. I want to testify I am free today all inside. It took a while to clean me up inside. It's awful. Men, your wives already know it, so you're not going to shock them. They already know it. Most men know it already too. Let's pray. Father, I just pray this week now, as I brought this word, I only brought just a little bit, but I think that's all they can take. But just get honest with you, Lord. Say, Lord, why do I get upset? Why do I get irritable? Why do I get uneasy? Why do I do this, Lord? God, you will speak. You have spoken to me all through the years and showed me. And give me the grace to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. God, I thank you that the light's shining this week. And deliverance is going to come. And victory is going to come. And how sweet it is when victory comes. I want to thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's just stop for a moment and pause. You have a question. Now, I went over some things very lightly.
But how many understand what I'm saying? Let me see your hands. Okay. That's good. Don't run from God. Always run to God. He is the best friend you will ever have. Do not fear what men will do to you. For God says, I'm with you, I'll never leave you, and I will never forsake you. All right, we're going to close. Let's stand to our feet and turn to somebody. And we're not that brave yet, but if you see anything in me that needs to be changed, would you tell me, don't do that. You'll probably make an enemy at this point of your growth, okay? God bless you. Have a great day.